Hello and welcome to the Morphomania podcast. God damn, I can stop talking like that. Uh, I am humanoid. Hello. I am humanoid along with. <laughs> Selling this is doubtfire when you do that, the noise. I'm surprised you didn't say it like the press way you did thousands of times before. And. And it's me, Mighty Morphin to Shingus Khan. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you used that one already. No, I told oh. you I was going to use that one for this episode. Today's podcast, we're going to do something a little different. Usually we do five episodes, but we're cutting it down to three due to, um, because mostly we're uh, getting burned out too fast, some of us. We... And it's also two and a half hours long. Yes, yeah, so we decided yeah, to do... We, we... We want to shorten it a little bit so that certain people don't... At bitch. least just see if it works, and if not, then we might go back to five. Who knows? Yeah. We'll do four or five when it comes to, like, if there's a five-parter or a four-parter. Is there another five-parter in the future? I keep forgetting if there is or not. There's usually four. I don't four. think there's another five-parter, but I'm pretty sure four and three-parters do it's happen. Three and four, but I'm just, saying, I'm just saying that for the audience, fool. <laughs> if there ever is a oh. five or six-parter. <laughs> powder uh, six powder <laughs> six powder is like three or five it's the powder, powder that tur- it's the powder that turns you into a sixth ranger so since there's three of us we're gonna do three episodes each unless there's like a three or four parter is what i'm saying but we'll see how mm-hmm. it goes uh you know because mm-hmm. we can easily burn out and it takes longer so anyways with that start with real of misfortune god damn why do i talk like that Episode because 27. So anyway. Maybe fuck yourself. Season 1, episode 27, Wheel of Misfortune. Uh, it aired November 1st, 1993. And uh, it was written by Mark Ryan and Cheryl Saban. Uh, and directed by Terrence H. Winkless again. And hosted by Pat Sajak. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was actually going to say, Wheel of Misfortune, where every single uh, wedge is bankrupt. Yes. Yeah, and there's still one lose a turn, <laughs> <laughs> one lose a turn, and then one uh, wedge, which is like the, the the vacation spot, but it's Vancouver. Yeah, <laughs> or Jersey. <laughs> the vacation sw- the wedge is Cleveland. <laughs> Ohio and Cleveland. Oh. Cleveland. Cleveland. Come on down to Cleveland Town, everyone. Stop it. Get some help. Okay, so the episode opens up with uh, the gang preparing for what I thought was King Lear, which I thought would have been a better performance, but instead it's Rumpelstiltskin. (laughs) King Lear, wow, I appreciate your acting deep cut. (laughs) You're welcome. Enchanté, enchanté, enchanté. Uh, but unfortunately, even if it was King Lear, Jason would probably be playing King Lear, so... Yeah, and, and he'd Jason. be like, yeah, hello, I'm King Lear. He actually <laughs> tries some good acting on this for some reason. Well, I, I, w- I will say, um, hit, I, I think it's in-character bad acting, or don't know if it's supposed to be bad acting, but uh, Jason needs I some just, lessons. I just love it when good actors try to do bad act like they act like they're a bad actor (laughs) so like the entirety of garth morangi's dark place yes also mr kaplan's back we see mr kaplan's back yeah mr kaplan's back this is uh his third appearance and we haven't talked about it yet so i actually looked up who plays uh mr kaplan Hmm. it's it's mr harold cannon Harold Cannon, what a name Harold Cannon, who's been in a few things. The last t- thing he was in was Hot Like Hell in 2019. He's he he hasn't been acting since 2019, apparently. Yeah, but I thought, uh, I thought he died a while back. But... There's a couple things here that oh no we, no he died last year actually he died oh. the day after my birthday last year. Oh okay. Oh jeez, right. rest in power, man. Hey, at least yeah, you got a crazy. death after your birthday. I'm cursed yeah. forever after. It's the sad passing of Chadwick Boseman. 
Yeah, yeah, that was really sad. Rest in power. Uh, Rest but the two power. things that I the two things that I know him from or am interested for your reactions on, he was re- most he was in ten episodes of the Eric Andre show. Get out of here, you fat bitch! Seriously, dude, what the f are you talking about? Really? Damn. Okay. Yeah. He played a trombone player. <laughs> This isn't the first tokusatsu-related thing he's been a part of. I swear he to God. Was in the, he was in an episode of the TV series Ultraman, the ultimate hero. Captain, you're all we've got. Ultraman. Wow, okay. I, you know what? Out of all the toku shows, I legit didn't think we'd get, like, or talk about Ultraman, honestly. Um, is this have- animated, or...? Live action. Looking at pictures, it's live action. I don't know if it's Americanized Ultraman, but it looks like it. I, as far as I know, there has never been Americanized Ultraman. Um, like unless you want to, oh unless God. you want to get technical and count Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad since Gridman's a spinoff. Okay, it only had 13 episodes, but some of the people here, Harrison Page, Rob Roy, Fitzgerald, Sandra Guibord, Scott Rogers played Ultraman, and for some fucking reason, Jeffrey Combs is in this season, is in the, in this show. Nick, excuse me? Jeffrey Combs? I'm not kidding. Herbert Jeffrey West himself? Combs. Herbert fucking West from Reanimator is in the Ultraman American show. Who would want to steal body parts? Beautiful, mysterious. It will stunt back there, probably cost Pete his life. Oh, relax, relax. He's going to be all right. Isn't that right, Pete? Pete? Okay, what is this show called again? It's called Ultraman the Ultimate Hero. As far as I can tell, there was only 13 episodes. Uh, Ultimate Hero. Because, oh my god, 1995, this looks to be the only American version of Ultraman that, like, has ever been around, once again, unless you count Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. Yeah, and yeah, Jeffrey Combs is in this, and he plays a character named Roger Schechter. Schechter. The guy, you know, the main character of Reanimator? I never the seen Reanimator, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, that's so sad. It's on my list of movies to watch, Reanimator. It's 100% a must-watch if you're into horror. Um, uh, he, was, he was the main villain in the film Would You Rather, if you ever saw that movie. I forgot he was the main villain in Would You Rather. That's pretty awesome. It was Oh, it was the leader voice in the Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes show. And the good one. Mm. Mm. He, he he's actually surprisingly been in some other uh toku or even toku adjacent products the the one i want to mention is a lesser known um one known as the giver giver no i, I love that no it's not MacGyver. MacGyver, you dumb dumb the giver the oh, giver he played the question in justice league unlimited Nice. He did play question, yes. We 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 got off topic pretty bad. Let's go back That's to the what episode. Happens when we ramble. Anyway, as I was saying, Jason's bad acting. Everyone's bad acting, to be fair. Like the only one that doesn't act, well, no, actually, Billy is the stage <laughs> hand slash technical director, and Trini's also not in it. I think the only people that actually act in this are Jason, Kimberly, Bulk, and Skull. Yeah. yeah, it's like they're the only people part of part of the place. And Rumpelstiltskin is generally like a three or four person performance, but still, bulk being Rumpelstiltskin kills me. And his dialogue in his scenes is just like '90s Rumpelstiltskin is a story I really want to see now. I love how he calls Kim Fair Babe all the time. And, and in this op- and in this opening acting scene, there's just a long period where he's sitting down next to the spinning wheel. Kimberly's explaining her, her like the princess's plight or wherever, and he's just staring at her like he wants to fuck her, or he just wants to kill her. Either one. No, that's no, skull. Skull's the murderer. Yeah, that too. Very true. 
Or wait, no, Skull's interested in Kimberly, so maybe Bulk only wants to kill Kimberly. <laughs> <laughs> what? My god. I just realized. Skull is dressed as the jester in this scene because he's the psychotic murderer of this show. Just like the Joker. Yep. That's how the last. That's it. Canon. Skull is the Joker in the, in this universe. Since yes. once again, in the second episode, we established that uh, Batman exists in this universe. So Skull is the Joker, and Bulk is oh the Penguin. Oh my God! He even has the crazy Joker laugh. <laughs> this is clicking way too much. <laughs> this is scary. We are coming up with way too many fan theories for Power Rangers in just the first season. As Bulk is continuing spinning the wheel. Uh, and he decides to go yeah, ape shit the on the thing, and it causes Mr. Kaplan's wig to either be blown away from the wind or just decide to leave the set. Maybe no, both. He's, the wig was just like, I'm out of here. So then we get a brief uh, thing of Kimberly being very upset since it was her great-grandmother's wheel, and unfortunately we don't get to see uh, Kimberly's uh, grandmother because Skull already got to her. And, <laughs> and, and bulk is just and bulk is just sitting in the chair in this scene, really sad, like he doifed it. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck off. Bulk and I wrote down bulk sad. Kim mad. Uh. Bulk sad. Kim mad. <laughs> That's a band or a castle. All because we... bulk spun the wheel and didn't make the deal. <laughs> Cut to Bandora Castle, where I, I gotta say, I think we're starting to get weird reasonings for Rita just being like, ah, you want to do this, eh? Well, then I'll create a monster, or like, it's getting that's related. To, weird. That. It's getting to the point where she's just getting petty. We haven't talked about it yet, but I did see a Marcusatsu video recently. Just in case you're curious about the inspiration with uh, Bandora Castle and you know the Bandora goons. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and there's also inspiration for the Power Rangers. So it's pretty obvious that the Zoo Ranger theme is very heavily inspired by Jurassic Park. Yeah. The theme song? The no, the no Zhu Ranger, like the concept, the dinosaur rangers. Yes. Oh. Uh, it was inspired by Jurassic Park. Uh, but the actual inspiration for Bandora Castle and specifically the Bandora baddies, like their personalities, mm -hmm. and I'm not making this up. They're inspired by the Adams family. I see it. I definitely see it. <laughs> you were expecting uh, the Adams family? I can see a uh, squad as uh, Pugsley Adam and uh, Babu as Wednesday Adams. And there's like Uncle Fester, which is Goldar. Goldar's Uncle Fester. Yes. Uh, but specifically the Christopher Lloyd Uncle Fester. Is there any other uh, other kind of Uncle Fester? <laughs> No, uh, there's I mean, the there, 60s there... Uncle Fester, there's oh, the Adam Family right. Values Uncle Fester, there's the new Adams Family one, there's the animated Adams Family that they did a while ago. I, I love Adams Family Man, step up. I don't and count. let's not forget so about the only other Fester that matters. Fester's Quest. Uh, <laughs> anyway, Goldor's voice is back. Oh, thank God. And I, I just, thank God. I hope I hope at this point, for the love of God, please stay good. Like, I, I bet you anything that I, I bet people got complaints, like in the voice, like, oh, it's too silly. But then it's like people started complaining. It's like, wait, why is the silly voice gone? We loved it. Yeah. The same reason oh, why I... Lord Zed got like turned into like a comic cool character later on, because the parents complaining, saying, oh, he's too scary looking. He's God too damn it. evil. Yeah. yeah, like he's a villain. Uh, we also forgot earlier that after Bulk broke the spinning wheel, Kimberly was all sad, and Tommy slid into her DMs like, oh, don't worry, babe, I'll fix it. Tommy, <laughs> using his actual superpower, his cock. Negging? Negging? Oh, <laughs> no, his cock. His second superpower is negging. So we cut to the Angel Grove juice bar, and uh, we get a brief scene of Kimberly being upset, explaining to Ernie about her wheel and how much it means to her. And yeah. uh, and then and then uh, Tommy comes in, and oh, I'm trying to remember. D d does he like offer to fix it like he does the float? Yeah, he offers to fix Tommy it. Tommy also offers. He offers to fix it twice, and then they off they relent to go to the drama classroom to pick up the wheel. But unfortunately, Goldar and the putties have already stolen it. <laughs> 
It's just the putties that were there. It wasn't Goldar. No, Goldar was there too. Was? Oh, yes, he was. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Yeah, for like a brief two seconds. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the putties are in school now for the first time, stealing stuff. And uh, as they enter the classroom, the wheel is gone. And uh, they go looking all over the place. Uh, and we get a long, like, 30-second scene of Tommy and Kimberly asking all the extras if they've seen the wheel. Bulk and Skull just throwing popcorn. Skull was eating popcorn. That's what it was. And they and Bulk just had this weird fly puppet or whatever. I, I went back and saw the episodes. I don't know if you guys saw it. it legit no, like, I saw it too, but I thought it only showed up at the end of the episode. No, it was like five It was like five minutes in. Yeah, but he, it also shows up later. I was going to bring it up. Yeah, weird as shit. Really weird. And also, when they ask Bulk if he's seen the wheel, he said that Skull, uh, that he was broke, so Skull used it to uh, make some money out of straw so he could buy a soda. <laughs> Also, can I mention that for some reason, this scene when they enter the juice bar, the way they shoot it, the scenery is kind of darkish. It's always so colorful, but I don't know why. For this scene, it is lit a little uh, dimmer than usual. Yeah, it's a little bit dimmer, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's, I don't know if it's meant to be like later at night or maybe it's in the middle of the day so they're saving electricity or something. I don't know. Yeah, I just find it weird because usually, usually the Power Rangers is always like in bright settings and all that. And now we get a shot of Bandora Castle where we get the most vile, the most vicious, the most evil monster ever created in Power Rangers history. Uh -huh. It's just a fucking wheel. It's a fucking wheel! Not the wheel! <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, the only man who can defeat it is Conan the Barbarian, and he's not in this universe yet. This is what the nostalgia critics said about inanimate objects being scary coming true. Yeah, no, no, thank you. Like I've, I've only played like five minutes of Earthbound, and it's like I, I, I did enough bitching with the traffic light fucking turtle a few episodes ago. Yeah, I'm but not this, getting into but, it again. But this is just a it's, it, it's a goddamn wheel. It's just a goddamn wheel. Oh, watch out for the watch out what watch out for the goddamn it's, wheel. Like it's gonna get you with its uh, pointy corners and spinning and bullshit. It's not just a wheel. It's a spiky wheel. It's a spiky wheel. It makes it what the it's fuck a wheel of, of misfortune. <laughs> ah, ah, he said it. He said it. Roll credits. <laughs> and then you also have to include the, my only ability to, uh, the only way I'll be able to defeat this threat is if I become Superman 4, the quest for peace. Oh, so that's why they call it that. I religiously watched that movie as a kid, don't hate me. Did you know the original villain was supposed to be this really, uh, mentally challenged boy? Come on, boy. Are we talking about Power Rangers or Superman, Superman 4? Superman 4, you fool. Quest for Peace. <laughs> That's stupid. Literally a video on YouTube where, like, the original villain was this, like, very slow-looking dude. Uh, and people say, like, the, then they change their mind saying, like, you know what? It looks like Superman is just beating up a disabled boy. That's just like that. That's like how the first Rodan movie was all just in that kid's head as a dream. Uh, was that Rodan or Son of Godzilla? Or no, no Godzilla's was, Revenge. It was Godzilla's it was Revenge, Rodan. where it was, it was like both all Godzilla's Revenge and Rodan. So to break it down, those movies suck. Yeah, indeed. So then we get another shot of Kimberly being really upset and. Honestly, I, I always thought that this was a really cute scene where uh, all of her friends are mimicking her with putting her hand on her face. Like, yeah, that to me is like best friend shit. Like, like you and I, I'd probably just tell you you're stupid and then you'd be like, OK, I love you, too. And then like everything would be fine. <laughs> yes, exactly. Or, or no, no, I know. <laughs> I know exactly what I would do. I, I would put on my best old man makeup, knock on your door, and go up to you and be like, Hi, I'm Ed Asner. I know that voice. <laughs> no, come on. Don't expose my love for that scene to the world. <laughs> Why? It's beautiful. It's a great. After Kimberly uh, finishes up being all sad and uh, we get another clip of Bandora Castle. 
we get uh, Tommy and uh, another putty fight. Oh, but before the bridge. but before the putty fight, he's walking across the bridge, and all of a sudden, Tommy feels a goddamn force. Hold up! Wait a minute! Something ain't right. He has a high metachlorian count. Thanks. Maybe that's he why he high. keeps negging people. It gives him psychic sensing abilities. Yes. Nah, it's just his cock. <laughs> <laughs> so on on this bridge fight, I know there's specifically something uh, Adam wanted to talk about. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, this fight is hilarious. With how weird it is. So the all the putties come out on the bridge and there's there's just, you know, some normal fighting and then, <laughs> then there's one bit where he punches a putty out and they just reverse the footage of him jumping up. Like he, he lands in, in in the actual correct way. He lands and then turns and punches the guy, but in reverse he punches the guy. Looks, turns over, and then jumps and does a front flip over the bridge. Then we get a bit more fighting, and then we get a bit more fighting in like the ravine under the bridge. Then he looks up at his bag, and then they fucking reverse the footage of him jumping with doing a front flip. Think right. Tommy in this episode is almost as funny as in the Spit Flower, where he's struggling to keep his goddamn clothes on. And he's yeah, his clothes keep it's... falling off. Oh my god, no ninety setting in this, Jesus. But then, unfortunately, at the end of the fight, he gets back up onto the bridge and he's accosted by his only true nemesis and the most difficult thing ever for him to get out of. Rope. Oh, <laughs> no. Untied the true rope. most dangerous item in Power Rangers history. Mm. A rope. No, rope and net. N like, rope nets net are, like, the most dangerous thing in this fucking show. Yeah, I know. If only a net showed up later. But yeah, he's he's wrapped up in a, in a rope, and he doesn't Annette have his communicator. He, he doesn't have a communicator. He doesn't have no, not a net Benning. <laughs> he uh... he he doesn't have his communicator on him, and he looks over to his bag, and he says, "Why did I put my communicator in the bag?" The way he says, "Bag." And then cut to commercial. Yeah, they cut to commercial. How is it when the when this show is like the, the show is most entertaining and most fun to watch when it's like w w we're in the goofy, silly filler episodes? Hey, yeah, don't get me don't get me wrong. The filler episodes can be funny at times. No, <laughs> but I'm the saying they're like better. Ninety percent like, filler. Like I'll openly say, I think I had more fun watching some filler than Green with Evil. Mm. Yeah, same here. Yeah. I still think our best episode is that six episodes of filler as opposed to Green with Evil. Mm -hmm. And so we get, uh, I believe they beam up to the command center uh, after hearing word that, um, beam that up. Tommy was captured. Yeah. Beam up. Okay. All right. All right. Beam me up, Zordy. <laughs> Yeah, oh my goodness. And uh, they get word that Tommy's kidnapped and uh, they get sent down to uh, go help him. Or I, or, or is it uh, Scorpina and uh, yeah, Goldar Scorp fight first? Scorp Scorpina and Goldar are attacking. So they get sent down to, uh, to repel Scorpina and Goldar. But also, they also mention that the, the wheel, and they all look so terrified of the wheel when they see it on the fucking viewing globe. Oh my god, it's a wheel! It's not a wheel! Not the goddamn this wheel! This is really bad! <laughs> uh, yes. Go to the skull corner. Okay, so, and and then as Rita makes him grow, we, we get something I, I... I don't know why I said this at first, but when Scorpina grows, I, I just go like, why does she kind of look like she have, she has Tom Servo mouth? And who's Tom Servo? <laughs> Tom Servo, because <laughs> she she just grows, and not only do we get Scorpina growing, we also get Goldar growing, and we get the return of his giant swinging cod piece. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you Power Rangers will feel the cod piece of vengeance. <laughs> and yeah, then the, after that, Scorpina grows into her monster form, and then she says attack, and when her mouth opens, it does look like Tom Servo from MST3K. I'm gonna leave now, and I'm gonna go fuck myself. We're gonna get so many weird, or, or so many people just saying, like, you're stupid, Malcolm. Or, 
Deutsch. They, they, they already know that. They already, they already know that. I called you Malcolm multiple times in every episode. We all see our real names, even though we... I, how I, how I, dare you dox we, me like that? You dox yourself. How dare I dox you? You dox yourself. To be fair, though, like I do, well, I do. I didn't uh, know that. Hey, Doif, fucker. I. To be fair, though, I do call his humanoid Doif, and uh, I don't think I see Dead Troopers enough because he always changed your name, and then we just call ourselves a real name. So the Rangers uh, jump up to their Zords, and we get a brief uh, T Rex fight with um, with Goldar, where unfortunately he is stopped by a net. <laughs> The return of the net, not the oh, net. Oh no, not the net. This hasn't been a problem since different drum. <laughs> <laughs> literally 22 episodes ago. Very much. It's literally just like rope and rope and, and like rope nets, just like the one thing that can defeat any monster or hero in Power Rangers. It's like they're as strong as steel, but they're rope. Like, could the RPM Rangers literally have defeated Vengex just by throwing a net over him? Yes. <laughs> that or putting a potato in his, in his exhaust pipe. Ding, ding, ding. We come back to the command center and we have Zordon's voice. Yeah, uh, fucking weird ass Zordon voice change because we we cut to Tommy who's tied up in the forest. The putties are looking after him. Uh, they're actually looking at his bag, and Tommy's almost got his rope broken through. So he he, he does the greatest acting in the world. He says, "Oh, guys, I'm sick. Like oh. really sick. I need some help." And then they all just slowly walk up to him. He breaks the rope, and then he destroys them. <laughs> He even and said, he, he, even, he even said, you guys are unbelievable. This guy is unfucking believable Yeah, then he goes into his bag, pulls out the communicator, and he's saying, Zordon, what's happening? And this is where Zordon's weird voice change happens, because it, it doesn't sound anything like him. A battle rages on the other side of the park, but more power is needed. I have told Jason to bring all the Zords together to form Ultra Zord. I know, no, right? It's, it, it's it, like uh, it's almost like they had to sub in for the uh, uh, the voice actor of of Zordon for this episode. <laughs> My head canon for this is that David Fielding couldn't record this one line because he had to go to the hospital or something. Oh, uh, so D Chaim Saban, Chaim Saban is the one that read it. Oh, David Fielding doesn't do the voice; it's somebody else. Yeah, also okay. forgot to change Zordon's water. <laughs> they forgot to pay the water bill. <laughs> they forgot to pay the water bill. No, no, he forgot to change it out. It, it's like every once in a while, well, when you get a fish tank, you need to switch out the water to keep up from moss and, like, all that green crap from growing all over it, just like Zordon's tank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so if if you don't change the water for too long, Zordon turns into Zoltar? <laughs> oh, my God. Make sure you clean the tank then, please, God. Yeah. What the fuck is this can conversation? Never go back to fucking bad reboot. What the fuck is this conversation? What? <laughs> it's hilarious. Anyway, what it is. <laughs> right. Anyway, so after the forming of the Megazord, we we get a, a a literal fight between the Megazord and a wheel. Wait, hold on. Before <laughs> before we get to that, I was gonna say. So we're 13 minutes into this episode, and you know what's missing? The fucking wheel. Where the fuck is it? Where's the wheel? What? It's the name of the show. <laughs> it's the, the monster of the week. It hasn't what? shown up yet, and then it shows up in the Zord fight. It spins. I think Spinner. because they called it the Wheel of Misfortune, maybe it was like spreading misfortune. I don't know. It's stupid. It's a wheel. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, we get the fight between the Megazord and the wheel, and the wheel literally attacks the Megazord like it's a shitty, one of those shitty, like, saw blade battle bots. Yep. <laughs> I've literally it, it looks like a flying Beyblade. Yeah. So, like, like the Beyblade from uh, that James Bond movie was Roger Moore. What's it? After they slash down the wheel by summoning the power sword, or, yeah. or after landing a final hit. Mm -hmm. No, no, not final hit. I forgot. This is the um, total mind blank there, sorry. Um, this is the very first formation 
of the of Ultra the Zord. Ultra Zord. Uh, they call on Zordon's old friend, Titanus. Yes. So yeah, <laughs> Gung Ho was friend. literally, that's how they introduced the Ultra, Ultra Zord. He's a friend. What? What the fuck? It's, 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 it's stupid. It, it's like this to me. I, I feel like if there was anything that uh, Gose was a reference to, it's the fact that the lazy introduction of Titanus. That to me is the spiritual representation of what Gose is in Super Mega Force. <laughs> so he, th this is the representation of. There's a very simple explanation for that. Yep. Yeah. So what I'm basically saying, lazy writing. Yeah, it is Jonathan Zacker who's ri written this too. I mean, he produced. It. Well, he's not writing yeah. it, but never mind. Never mind. <laughs> oh my God, it does make sense. Uh, but remember, this is Jonathan Zacker in the good era. We're not into the bad era until years later. Yeah, J J Jonathan Zacker, longtime producer and uh, showrunner for the show as well later on, went on to work on some of the best seasons of Power Rangers as, as well as some of the worst. And then he killed it with mm -hmm. Super Megaforce and Megaforce. That's what I meant by the worst. I yeah. know, that's what I'm saying. He just... Ruined it. So th <laughs> anyway, the Ultra Zord fires off a bunch of cannons that sound like stormtrooper laser noises. <laughs> yeah, the Ultra Zord, though, like, we, it's with the Dragon Zord and the Mega Zord, even though we didn't see the combination until the next episode. This pre, this is weirdly the Ultra Zord before the Mega Dragon Zord. Exactly. Okay. And then weird. after a, a brief. I, I gotta mention this. This is the only time during the Rita wrap up where we get. Um, Goldar only. At also, least so Rita, far. also after after the Ultra Zord destroys the spinning wheel, uh, Rita instant Ugh. transmissions away. Yeah. Oh yeah, just. Yeah, and it's like Goldar and Scorpina fade out of, like uh, gradually, but no, Rita is like there one frame gone the next. Nineties editing at your service. Oh my goodness! So last last thing about the Zord fight. Uh, this is something that pissed you off, Malcolm, where uh, the Ultra Zord is the one that defeats the spinning wheel. And then Rita and Goldar and Scorpina all go away. And then it shows a fucking, the panning shot of just the Megazord. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. No, I gotta say this. They were in the Ultra Zord. Why didn't we get a panning shot of the Ultra Zord instead of just... The, or, or even just the Megazord with the Dragon Zord on... No, it's just like, okay, uh, let, 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 let's... Mm -hmm. A lot of weird, yeah. a lot of weird inconsistencies in this episode. Yes, and, and yet still not as f hilarious as uh, Tommy struggle to keep his shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we get the actual wrap up where the uh, where they go to the dra drama class. The spinning wheel is back, and Kimberly's all excited about it. And this <laughs> and is then... where, goddamn. Fuck me. This is what kind of pisses me off. I'm a, now it's my turn. <laughs> oh, God. So, they go back to the drama class, and they find the wheel is there. It's like, how is the wheel here? And this is the start of it all. Resort oh, on chimes yeah. in. Resort on chimes <laughs> in, saying, like, Rangers, now that you defeated the goddamn wheel, the spell has been broken, so everything is back to normal. Henceforth, yeah, so everything that happens... In these seasons, every time some stupid spell Rust. is on there, they destroy the goddamn thing, and the uh, obvious answer is like, the spell is broken. Everything's Rust. fine. Fuck you! <laughs> Derivative <laughs> writing at its best, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Restore just, the status quo. Yeah. Now you can go back to uh, the uh, Balkan Skull. And, and then, Sorry, of yeah. course, we, we, we get uh, the play and uh, the amazing acting by uh, Balkan uh, Kimberly. Well, before the before the play before the play, Bulk and Skull are backstage watching TV, and then it cuts to the news, where the news guy from a few episodes back says that once again Angel Grove has been saved by the amazing Power Rangers. Uh, and then after that, Mister Kaplan comes back there, and it's like, "What the fuck are you idiots doing? <laughs> the curtain is up." He just and grabs to be fair, him. That'd piss me off if my actors were off doing something else while the curtain was literally up. Speaking of being somewhere else, sidebar, when I was in high school, little story here, doing drama class, uh, 
I was doing the thing with uh, my other actors and uh... cut that bitch off. After that, we get a uh, bulk uh, starting to collect hay uh, for, during the play, and uh, oh, no, he reaches before, down before, and rips his pants, that, before... where it's revealed his identity as the sixth ranger <laughs> with a giant six on his ass. <laughs> before the, before that happens, we get a bit of acting with Kimberly being pissed off about bulk not being on stage. <laughs> And then Bulkle Stiltskin comes out as like, oh, hello, fair babe. What can I do for you? And I'm here for you. And then Kimberly's like, certainly took your damn time. Uh, and then, and then yeah. after that, we get the bow, the end. Oh, oh, oh. oh you don't yeah. forget. Don't forget Skull's shitty acting. Cause... Jason, uh, tell, Jason as, the, as King Lear <laughs> tells us. Uh, Tells tells the princess, oh, you better do, all, you oh yeah, you better uh, make all this hay into, <laughs> drop into gold, or else uh, I'm going to be very cross with you. Uh, and I can't he, wait and for then, Jason's one man performances, Hamlet. Yes. yes, he he leaves, and then and then Skull literally look, points at Kimberly and goes, yeah, or else, or. Else, <laughs> oh, and I forgot one more thing. Uh, as uh, they're about to go back, as they're about to go live, as it were, they're about to like open the curtain again. Tommy said, or uh, uh, Billy says to Kimberly, Break a leg, Kim. And then Tommy, in his nagging self, literally looks at Kimberly and says, Don't you dare, because I need to get in that ass later. Anyway, yeah. end of episode, <laughs> yeah, and uh. Not only is it a number six, okay, no, it's not the end of the episode yet. For fuck's sake! Because I need to talk about the, uh, Bulk's underwear. Yes. It's a bunch of pigs in like, in like jockey uniforms. <laughs> and at, after his ass is exposed to the world, uh, Skull literally says, Way to go, Bulk. Way to bear your soul to the audience. <laughs> Uh, and then Kimberly curtsies, and then we have the end of the episode. Then the end of the episode. There it is. I'm sorry. There was a lot to talk about with the play. And now Malcolm is seizing. All right, so next episode. I'm oh, sorry, Malcolm. Uh, <laughs> now we move on to the next episode. Uh, season 1, episode 28 and 29, Island of Illusion, part 1 and 2. Uh, so the main credits, Chris Shoon, for some reason. Chris Shoon! Shoon! It was written by Chris and Shoon and Shoon Guy Levy, and I couldn't stop laughing because of the name. The, both episodes aired on November 2nd and November 3rd, 1993, and were written by uh, Chris Shoon, Shuki Shoon. Levy, Stuart St. John, and directed by Terrence H. Winkless again. Do you think Stuart St. John is Austin's dad? You are the father! <laughs> Uh, so the episode opens up uh, with uh, Zach doing some hip hop keto. Actually, it's more just hip hop because he's just dancing, dancing, and he's dancing like no one's watching, despite the fact that Trini and Kimberly are watching. And <laughs> Trini's all like, "Look at how good Zach's dancing is! He's totally gonna win the the, uh, the dance contest." Bulk and Skull show up and <laughs> says, "And Bulk, who is wearing a toque." And his old bee jacket. Uh, he's wearing a toque and he's got a ponytail coming out the back of it. And I swear I thought it was dreads. Bulk says, oh yeah, no, he's definitely going to lose the dance contest. And then Zach literally does like a spinning kick move towards Kimberly, which scares her. And throws uh, her smoothie all over Bulk. And, and Bulk gets pissed off. don't even acknowledge that Bulk is wet. Phrase it! I know what I yeah, said. No, I know what it. I said. I know what I said. You know, I gotta say, despite everything, the fact that they still have unbreakable confidence while being the world's worst bullies is very impressive. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, <laughs> yeah. no one met, no one says sorry to Bulk. They're just talking over him and Bulk in the background. Is... Bulk is really pissed off, and he's and yeah, Zach is has no confidence. He's like, I'm not gonna win. I, there's no way I can win the dance contest. And then Bulk walks up and says, oh, yeah, but I have a way that I can make you lose. <laughs> <laughs> we, we cut to Castle of Van... We cut to Bandora Castle, and Rita is uh, 
really pissed off and she's like all right now it's time to bring in the big guns i'm gonna show them how what they do when they mess with me i'm going to show them the wrath of lokar oh our boy lokar is first mentioned and also she mentions that she's also going to use something called mutitis yeah. which just sounds like a weird disease yeah you got some mutitis on you yeah. I will talk about mutitis in a second when we we'll get talk, a visual. We'll talk when about you get mutitis it, when yeah. he shows up. He also mentions uh, the island of emotion. The yeah. island of illusion. Oh, yeah. But she calls it no, the island no, of emotion. No, she calls it emotion here. Yeah. And then Goldar calls it the island of illusion. Yeah, they can't even get their sto story straight. Yeah, it's pretty weird. Uh, then we cut to Tommy teaching the minorities. What did he say? <laughs> <laughs> How to beat up other minorities. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, okay, so Tommy is... Uh, is basically t uh, t t teaching his uh, karate class, which he, uh, for the longest time, Jesus David Frank actually had in real life as well. My, my assumption is that he literally took, like, a couple of kids from his actual karate class and just brought them into the episode. Yeah, I can believe that. Yeah, which would be, it's a very Jason David Frank thing to do. And then we get a dance battle between Zach and Bulk, which we absolutely makes off. me piss my pants. We get a dance off, and the only question I could, I had in my head was, where's Vladimir Kozlov? The only question I had in my head is, who the fuck is that 40-year-old background in the background? With the bald, year old. With the bald head. Four-year-old background in the background? I didn't know uh, backgrounds could age, Andreas. I mean, 40-year-old yeah. background actor in the background with the bald spot. Yeah. 40-year-old ah. extra, yeah, in, in a youth center. Uh, but yeah, we get, a, we get a fun little dance battle where Zach is doing really cool moves, and then Bulk is just doing the Wish.com version of those moves. Yeah, <laughs> we got the that dance. And he gets most of them. No, he doesn't. Does. It's just when he gets to the third one and he starts backing up, he literally is a bowling ball for a bunch of pillars that are pins. Uh, and then after he wins the dance battle, Zach's like, <laughs> oh, I'm depressed. I'm not going to win the dance contest. <laughs> Bro, you just showed your moves there. God damn it, man. Yeah, literally. And so we cut back to Bandora Castle and... Rita's all set up to summon Lokar, and she mentions Lokar again. And then for some reason, Squat's really scared when she mentions Lokar this time. And she's like, he's like, no, don't bring Lokar here. And then Rita literally just yeets him across the room. Head trauma. It's never lupus. I have to say, something I'm starting to realize in Bandora bits, if you notice a bit, you can kind of see the story from Zhu Ranger leaking out, like specifically with the appearance of the Frankenstein's monster and something i'll mention in a bit um you can kind of see the story of Zhu ranger leaking out and kind of see what's going on Pandora is a satanist yeah. and lokar is satan and what's his name in the well, i was ranger? gonna get to that but what's his name in Zhu ranger though it's satan satan okay just yeah, it's just satan. the devil yeah, he's just Satan. I'll get to I'll get to this later. You fuck. Squat gets me. <laughs> and uh, we cut back to uh, the youth center, which is now in the middle of an earthquake. Uh, yeah, middle again. Of earthquake, earthquake again, because Rita is is accumulating so much like evil energy that it just causes an earthquake in Angel Grove. I feel like uh, at this the... point, uh, Angel Grove is going to end up like No Man's Land in Goth or Gotham and just go No Man's Land. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, at this rate, but the Gotham's already exists. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> well, that, oh, maybe that's what's going on right now. The earthquake is causing no man's land in Gotham. That's hilarious. Okay, good. So yeah, uh, we get that bit, and uh, then uh, the Rangers are all really worried about this, but then they just like walk five feet over, and despite everyone running in around in the youth center. Uh, they call up to the command center, and Zordon is like, "Yes, Jason, I know that's this is happening. I, I've been detecting really highly unusual spikes of energy from Rita's moon base." And go. Malcolm, did you have something you wanted to talk about in this scene? And now our feature presentation. Okay, okay. 
now allow me to completely unleash my fucking head. Okay, so allow me to explain or, or just elaborate on something. So Zordon knows mm -hmm. where the moon base is, knows where Rita and her goons are located. Yep. Why the hell doesn't he just take the Megazord there? And yeah, there's this whole stupid, stupid rule, which yes, when it comes to being on the Earth, does make sense. Don't escalate a fight. People get hurt. It's the moon! There's no people living on the moon! Who could get hurt, moon people? There are no moon people! No moon people can die because there are no moon people! No one can die on the moon! <laughs> Malcolm, what a, uh, but Malcolm, it's not Malcolm. a fair fight. Malcolm, it's not a fair fight, though. No, that's not what I was going to say, Malcolm. What about the moon cheese? <laughs> can't jeopardize the moon cheese mines. Uh, it, you know, you see, if they jeopardize, but no, even just by having a villain be on the moon and jeopardizing the moon bar, cheese mines. <laughs> but, sir, again, I got to disagree with you, like, because it'd be unfair fight if you just send the Megazord to the moon base, unless it's the moon though. Who cares? Okay, I'm done. No one's on the moon. Literally, no one is on the moon. Like the only thing you could possibly ri risk is like the rabbit hunch from Forze. But even then, that's not there yet. This whole goddamn show could have ended, but Zordon is a lazy fuck who probably doesn't want to send the Megazord because it probably burns out double A or triple A batteries. Oh, we'll no, get to that you, you with the you, know, you, know, we... you know what? I just thought about it. Maybe the maybe solar power doesn't work in space. Probably. Well, once and always, the Megazord does show up there, but that's later on. Uh, I have a headache. Oh, he has a headache. That's the perfect place to end it, right there. Anyway, we're going to continue. Yeah, so unusual spikes from Rita's moon base. And uh, all the rangers are called uh, to uh, help deal with Goldar, and who is uh, ra he's wreaking havoc thanks to this earthquake. Uh, Tommy was going to go help them, but then he sees his little, his little children cowering <laughs> under a table. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so Tom, and I'm not changing how I phrased that. Uh, so Tommy instead decides to save the minorities. And he's on his side quest again. Yeah, he's on his side quest. All the rangers teleport to, or they like go outside, and we get like a regular fight between the rain, the rangers without their costumes, and the uh, the putties, which I have to say is a really good fight. Has a lot of really fun spots, especially Zach with all of his weird hip hop keto kicking. It he's just doing a really good job. Yeah, I, find, I find weird I, though I, is that like they're all getting gearing up to fight, and Billy takes off his like uh, jacket thing that's in his uh, waist down, yeah. but you only see mm -hmm. four of them fighting. Billy j doesn't do anything. You, you don't even see him do anything. Billy's the tactician, obviously. He just needed to take it off because it weighs him down from running away. Very true, very true. Um, I, I just had to bring this up because I was um, curious with this uh, specific um, with this specific fight scene. I, I wanted to look up the uh, stunt coordinator. and nice. or Stunt coordinator or fight scene coordinator. I don't know if they got two different people to work on stunts or fights or if they just got one person for you know because it's like a uh non-union tv show so yeah. who knows um but his name is jeff pruitt or uh, he's the husband of stunt actress sophia crawford so if you give me a sec i will pull up sophia crawford to see if there was anything of note she was in and yes yeah, she was she was um it looks like she was the, the stunt double for buffy in buffy the vampire slayer Ooh, that's, that's a cool that's awesome though i dig that that's a pretty cool credit and I, I i could even see her maybe doing it once in a while too because i do know that sarah michelle geller also did her own stunts in that show as well yeah i'm sorry that you flipped out uh <laughs> I'm going to keep talking now so you don't have to talk as much. Uh, Thank you. But, uh, yeah, you're welcome. So, yeah, we get that really good fight. We also get a bit in that fight where Trini, uh, Johnny Cage is a putty, where she goes into the splits and hits him in the dick. Oh, that was a good one. That was a good one. Which is very I cool. didn't even put that. 
I didn't even put that together in my first viewing. <laughs> That's oh. very cool. Uh, we we get that, and then this whole time during the fight, Rita has been casting her spells, and she's like, "Oh yes, finally the final spell to unleash Vlokar," and uh, she does the spell, and then doesn't say who is actually coming out, and who shows up but a giant weird Franken corpse. What the fuck is that? Uh, this is Mutitis. I brought this up because it was something I noticed immediately, and I think this is where um, the unfortunate use of of uh, Sentai versus Power Rangers comes in, is that this is clearly a, or I wouldn't say clearly, but because it, it took me a second, but is a half-melted version of the Frankenstein monster. Yeah, it literally is, like, that's why I said it's a Franken corpse. Yeah, so it, like, almost maybe they revived him after, uh, like, dying a bunch, which it does yeah. make sense, considering Frankenstein won't stay dead. It's in, he, he was in the Lazarus pit, chilling with Ra's al Ghul. There's already way too many connections to Batman as is, we don't need another one. The, the, they summon the Megazord and the, um, and, uh, the, the Grow Big, and, yeah. Phrase it. They, they get they get in the Megazord and the Megazord and after they put the Megazord together, a Jason is the one that says, right, "Let's go get Ugly Man." Mr. Ugly Man. Java. Mr. Ugly Man. Java. Thanks again for the amazing acting, of Jason. And I think I think Ugly Man would have been the better name than Mutitis. So we we get a little bit of Mut of Mutitis fighting this Megazord, and then out of nowhere, oh, Minority Report. <laughs> what? We cut back to Tommy with his minorities. Oh yeah. All Hence right. Minority Report. Minority report. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we cut to that. Uh Tommy gets a message on his communicator. He steps out of the room for a moment and he's he's right next to a dare poster. I remember Dare. Do you remember Dare? It failed. I vaguely remember Dare. I, I was Dare school, came to my school a few times. I was in school at the point like when I be when I was in elementary, I was at the point where they were just phasing out dare and using different drug uh drug resistant like uh material. So yeah, me too. I vaguely remember dare. Zordon's like, dude, you gotta get down to the, the Rangers, fool. They're they're fighting uh mutitis. Uh you need to get checked for mutitis. And he goes like sure, I just gotta like drop uh I just gotta yeah. I just gotta leave these kids I just alone. Gotta drop the kids off at the pool. I thought you were gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, he talks to Ernie and tells him like, "Hey, can you take care of these kids, even though you don't know them?" <laughs> sure. Yeah, can you can you watch my your minorities are already playing your arcade games? Yeah, and he's trying to fix a plate, isn't he? Yeah, he's like got a broken plate from the earthquake, and he's trying to glue it back together. During the uh, mutitis fight, uh, we finally get as the sky goes dark. And we get, oh, coming from the sky, out. in a ball of fire, we get Lokar, who, as as you said before, Adam, is voiced by, uh, or no, it is Satan in the Japanese show. But yep. I gotta mention voiced. this, by Robert freaking Axelrod. He's Fuck voiced by Robert. Sir. Yeah, the legend himself. And Rest in peace, Robert Axelrod. Rest in power, man. But... Something I gotta say, something that clearly stuck out to me was he does the Lord Zed laugh. <laughs> this is Axelrod's trial run of Lord Zed before Lord Zed was a thing. I'd almost say yeah. Like like uh, maybe yeah. um maybe like his performance in this episode, which is really just his laugh because it's the best part of it, is like Hey, let's bring that guy back for something. And then he just ends up being the most iconic villain in the series. You know what? I'd say one of, if not the, actually. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just saying, let's bring him back. Besides doing Fincer, he can do something else. So Lokar uses his breath of doom, as Rita says, to transform Mutitis into a weird dragon thing <laughs> that, yeah. is, that, is still, that is still Mutitis. And then they fight for a little bit. Uh, the Dragon Zord is here as well, by the way. I don't know if we mentioned that. The dragon's work came in. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Scar was there. And there's a lot of fighting. And then eventually, fucking Mutitis opens his mouth like Tom Servo again. And tilts your head back okay. and moan. 
and instead of just saying something, he's just spraying toxic foam all over them, which just looks like a damn bukkake. And then Jason goes like, oh no, toxic foam! But if you take a look at the monster's design specifically, you can actually see the new head. It's coming out of Mutitus's old head. Uh huh, coming. Yo, I didn't even catch that. That's actually really cool. And then we get a dumb thing, because it looks like they stuck Satan's head right in the middle of his chest. You can actually see in this monster's chest, like right in the center of it, it looks like a blue log with, like, sorry, low cars hair on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm sorry, low cars a freaky name, but when your character is Satan before, it's like everything else is just lesser. Yeah, so it basically, yeah, Mutitus got the mark of Satan, and that's why he's scary. Uh, so they've been beaten down by the bukkake of the toxic foam, and Rita now takes this chance to transport the Sentai actors to the Island of Illusion. It's clearly the Sentai actors. Yeah, like Barai's even there. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. They're wearing white pants. That's how you can tell. Uh <laughs> So they get transformed through the devil. I, I originally thought it was just a rip in space time, so I called it the devil's anus. <laughs> devil's but anus. Uh, it's actually they're just thrown into the island of illusion. La or all six of them land straight onto a palm tree, and then they begin to explore the island of illusion. And as they're exploring, Kimberly gets scared by a ficus. A shrubbery! Oh, before that, uh, command center, like Zordon says, Alpha Sigma, oh no, they went to somewhere where we can't get them. How do we get them out? And Zordon was saying, with confidence, they got to figure out their confidence. Get the fuck out of here, Zordon. <laughs> the real superpower of teamwork. Yeah. So after they get sent to the island, um, we I want to say we get weird shots of, like, animals. A bearded dragon. Or no, not a bearded dragon. A Komodo dragon. No, a Komodo dragon. <laughs> During all of this exploration, we keep seeing shots of a weird little man that's watching them from the woods. And after a bit of exploring, we hear some off flute music. Oh, what is that noise? Go towards the flute fu music, and who's playing that? It's an Ewok. It's something much more intimidating. It's Quagmire. Giggity, 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 giggity. Ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ah, ding, tang, walla, walla, bing, bang. Who else like, but Quagmire? He disappears. Yeah. Technically, he is an Ewok, because he did play an Ewok. I'm not being... <laughs> yeah, I was going to bring that up. Quagmire is acted by Kevin Thompson. Hello, Mr. Thompson. I think he's talking to you. Who was the original Ewok? Not One of the, the original Ewoks. He definitely wasn't Wicket, which is the most famous Ewok, because that one was Warwick Davis. Warwick mm. Davis. He was he was one of the original Ewoks, and you can yeah. like by the way he walks in this in these in this two parter, you can tell he's really doing the uh, the Ewok mannerisms, which is cool. Or maybe the uh, Ewoks were doing Kevin Thompson mannerisms. <laughs> 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 yeah uh he's all the quagmire also speaks in rhyme which is uh it's certainly a decision he, he, he says some shit like oh you guys are fucking weird blah 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 i'm gonna leave now then we cut to fucking goldar's weird head in the sky coming message from the big giant head. oh there you're gonna see some bullshit on this island rangers <laughs> yeah. and then and then we cut to five returning monsters that are that re show up. We've got uh we've got Eye Guy is there from episode eight. We've got Shell Shock, Malcolm's favorite. <laughs> we've got Pudgy Pig, Malcolm's actual favorite. Um, yeah, actually, um, no, I do like. <laughs> yeah, we've no, got a uh, uh fucking. <laughs> One that we thought was Spitflower, but it's actually Panoctopus from a, from the clown episode. Ah, uh, no clowning around. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it, it's not the Spitflower because it doesn't have a big purple ball sack on its <laughs> chin. Very true. And then there's a fifth one. I can't remember what the fifth one was. The, the, niz, the snizzard. Uh, oh, the, the snizzard. Brian yeah, the one snizzard. Here. Surprise, motherfucker. Yeah, it was it was I guy shell shock pudgy pig snizzard and the other one. And and Pinoctopus, yeah. And, yeah, the other one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, uh, the other so one. Yeah, they're back. They, they charge at the rangers, and then they disappear. 
and Goldar's floating head in the sky once again uh, says, oh, this is the island of illusion where the only thing that's real is the danger. Is it though? And I have to mention that in 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 this shot of him in the sky as the, the sun baby he... from Teletubbies. Yes. As oh the sun god, baby from Teletubbies. Get, I'm get, oh god. <laughs> no, don't you don't have to you don't have to show god damn it you're showing. <laughs> as he's a floating head in the sky, his helmet it just made for this is weird as hell, but it, his helmet just made me think of Common Rider Gaim. I don't know why. It just kind of looks like it. Oh my God. Hold on, give me a sec. I I have to pull up the image just so I can see it myself to see if I might be crazy. I might be crazy, but I'm pretty sure it does look like that. Gold I know what it is. It, it, it's the thing that looks like the orange slice on his head. That's exactly what it is. And his uh, crown bit, it actually, I pulled up the image, so I'm looking at it right now. The crown bit kind of looks like, um, the, 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 orange, like the, or the gold blade thing from Gaim's helmet. Yeah, 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 yeah. The orange crescent shape that's on top of the helmet. Yeah, like it does. It just, it's weird, it, but it does. I see it. I actually, no, no, you're, you're not, you're not loony. I do see it. Okay, good. I'm not alone. Uh, as we, uh, as, as Goldar says, oh, we're going to turn up the volume on this shit. And uh, basically just flipping them out. Uh, Zach wanders away and starts screaming. He sees a giant snake and no one else sees the snake. It's only Zach. And Zach's screaming into the camera. You know what that means. Everyone's getting a scarecrow sequence. <laughs> yeah, like which this. is fine. Honestly, I'm OK with that. Uh Zach eventually runs away from the snake or the the guys pull them away, pull him away and like try and tell him that it isn't real. Then fucking Zach starts phasing out of reality. Oh, my God. Green. Michael He's J. being Fox green screen. screened to death. Zach is fa being green screened to death. Quagmire comes back in a puff of rainbow smoke and says, basically, uh, if you aren't confident, you're going to if you f give into your fear, you're going to disappear. Uh, so this is a typical horror film then, because the black guy's dying first. And Quagmire disappears to go get milk. <laughs> uh, that's the end of this. That's the cliffhanger at the end of this episode. Yeah. And we move swiftly on to part two of Island of Illusion. Also, who was it that said uh, that Quagmire was uh, Billy's dad? Oh, that, uh, was, that was me. me. Uh, that or was, or was that me. you? No, that was, that was you and me. We kind of came up with that idea where Quagmire is just Billy's dad that went to get the milk and ended up on the island of illusion. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, no, I have a better one. I, I got a better idea. No, he isn't yeah. his long lost dad. He's his Hugo from that one uh, Treehouse of Horror episode where Bart had a conjoined twin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he's Billy's conjoined twin. Yeah, and it, and Zordon he, he Zordon can see the future. You see, that's why he recruited these specific five teenagers with attitude, and he felt bad for Quagmire, so he saved him and put him on the island of illusion to help anyone who gets stuck there. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Well, and unfortunately, I... Quagmire doesn't know because if he did, it would end up just like that Treehouse of Horror episode. Him yeah. throwing a pigeon to a rat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, this episode was written by Shun. It was the it's the same as part one because they he wrote both of them. Yes, I just wanted mm -hmm. to say, I just wanted to say Shun. Zach is like fading away. It's always the black guy that gets to go first. Uh, so we cut back to the moon base. Reed is happy, saying, "Oh, these rangers are gonna go away forever soon." We cut back to Zach, and he's still getting phased out, like Malcolm said, green screened out of there. Mm -hmm. Trini qual calls Quagmire's help, and Quagmire appears and talks to the audience, breaking the fourth wall. You also forgot to mention that while they were trying to figure out what the guy's name was, Jason calls him Quincy, and Kimberly calls him Quasimodo. Oh, right. Quasimodo? <laughs> Quincy? No. How many names start with the letter Q? Quinzel, Quagmire, Quincy, Quintuplets. I don't know. What the fuck did you just say? <laughs> yes, that's a name. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, Quintuplets is a name. Oh, uh, yes. Quagmire says some bullshit to, uh, and uh, Zach goes like, okay, I gotta raise my confidence, and this is like the first ever clip show, which I fucking hate. 
Oh yeah, so we get a clip. We get a clip show of Zach defeating the Nasty Knight on his birthday. Well, like I'm saying, it's a clip show because it, it, further Power Ranger shows they have clip shows of just saying what happened in the previous episode, and it's such a boring thing to do. And so this is the first but, ever clip show, but they did it right. But I do gotta say though, Power Rangers will eventually do better clip shows in the future because crummy ass clip shows usually are. From me as clip shows yeah but specifically uh top of my head i know there's one in dino charge that's really good that was great. and of course probably the number one which i always think of is RPM. a different uh s no spd oh spd yes yes uh, spd which i'd say in my opinion actually uh has shades of the famous uh batman the animated series episode pov hmm. mm. okay. Uh, which specifically what happens is three cops are questioned. Uh, Renee Montoya, uh, a rookie, I can't remember whose name is then, Detective Harvey Bullock, um, on a case that they work together. And you get to see what happened during that case from their three perspectives. Oh, nice. Yeah, awesome. and, mm-hmm. and that's actually what you get in that SPD episode, which is a hell of a lot better than this crummy ass clip show. It's decent. <laughs> yeah. And uh, didn't didn't someone bring up that RPM has a really good clip show as well? It's like breaking the fourth wall. Yeah, that was you, Andreas. Yeah, it's like bringing up, like literally breaking the fourth wall and showing behind the scenes footage and putting clip shows. It's just awesome the way they did it. Yeah, so this clip show is literally just uh, is just Zach beating the nasty knight on his birthday. Yeah, that's his uh, fear, like uh, the nasty knight. So, uh, well, no, technically Zach's fear was snakes, but his positive thought was him beating the nasty knight. Oh, right, right. I got that confused. My bad. My bad. Another. Yeah. Another callback to my first episode, which I appreciate. Yeah, uh, remembers that he beat the Nasty Knight and comes back and he's all happy. And then it's Kim's turn. And... <laughs> no, 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 no. First, they they cut to Bandora Castle and talk about how Zack escaped the fear spell, but none of the other Power Rangers will be so lucky. And then Squad says, Then you can finally be the Earth's Big G! Maybe he's the one who lives in the cheese mines on the moon. And then Babu says dandy, which I swear to God, I thought he said Gandhi. I thought like, he said, oh, he, it was like, oh, you'll be the big cheese, like Gandhi, <laughs> like Gandhi. <laughs> I actually thought he said candy at first. I thought he said gangly. And, and that reminded me of this one line specifically from, uh, uh, I want to say it was the Francis Ford Coppola movie Jack, where these two bullies are like, talking to each other and like as a celebration of like like this is so easy if they just go cake and like slap hands cake wasn't that three ninjas where they said cake maybe just saying cake is a 90s thing i don't know No, it's not we never said that (laughs) yeah no now we say cake referring to someone's ass quote quote alpha five quote quote yeah (laughs) we come back to alpha five in the command center fixing the computer and then Gets a shock on the ass, so he, he, uh, the computer's getting me too In the criminal justice system, sexually based offenses are considered especially heinous. Yeah, cancel this computer. <laughs> yes, cancel that computer. <laughs> so we come back to the Rangers on the island. They're talking, and the Quagmire comes back saying, like, oh, random bullshit. I can't remember anything he says because it's all in rhyme. And he disappears like a puff of smoke. And yeah, Billy and goes. Then- like, oh, based on my calculations, the way to get our communicate. Oh, yeah, the communicators and uh, morphers are gone. So power like, coins. Power coins. We got to go the other way, that way, because of the wind resistance. How does he know? How does he have a 98% probability that the power coins are in the direction they just came from? I don't know. Because Billy is Professor Frank and knows everything, apparently. So Billy is Jigsaw is what we've gotten out of this. Ah! There's a simple explanation for that. For fuck's sake, shut the fuck <laughs> up, Gose. <laughs> oh my god. So uh, the big uh, giant the big giant head comes back and makes fun of them. And then um and, Kim's... and says that there's going to be an illusion to uh facilitate Kimberly's confusion. Yes. And uh Kim <laughs> walks away going like, "Oh my god, I can't believe this." And what's Kim's fear? Vulcan skull being angels. Vulcan which, skull being nice. Which I'm puzzled, which, like, at first I was like, isn't this, like, what she would want? Like, the dickheads being nice? But then, 
if you think about it, the skull in uh, fucking Super Samurai when he shows up never changed. And so in her eyes, them being like they always are is what she wants. What do you mean he never changed? Mm-hmm. He did change. He became rich. No, no, no. You see, the reason that she's scared no, of... I'm Wolf saying that they don't be- become like like clean cut like uh, suit like they're still wearing like the, 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 they're still bulk and skulls right right sorry adam but, go yeah, ahead just in a, just angelic yeah the reason she's actually scared of angel bulk and skull is that she saw the movie dogma oh, oh <laughs> damn behold the metatron herald of the almighty and voice of the one true god oh my god and and and, and she knows that they both don't have junk they're basically just dog. Now, at this point, I'm just begging for the Metatron to come out. <laughs> I'm as anatomically incorrect as a Kendall. So the Rangers see that Kim is looking at nothing and are worried. Literally, like, yeah. Kimberly literally says, if Rita can make Bulk and Skull nice, she can do anything and then starts fading out of reality. Oh, yeah. I- and then we get Etrigan, the little elf on the shelf, showing up again. <laughs> For fuck's sake. He talks in rhyme again. Don't know what he said, but he said, like, just stop being afraid, fool, and disappears. Be positive. Yeah. And Tommy's all worried because he goes, like, come on, Kim, you got to beat this. I got to get on that ass later. Cancel, humanoid. You can't disappoint my cock, Kimberly. <laughs> <laughs> so Kimberly thinks back to, like, the sn- he's a snizzard guy. No, it's not the snizzard. It's the terror toad. It's the terror toad. Terror toad. Terror toad. Yeah. And like how he... another callback to another one of Malcolm's childhood episodes, Power Ranger punks. Power Ranger punks. Oh no, not not episode uh, novelization. Book. Yeah, book. So she remembers beating the terror toad by throwing her uh, bow with the Twinkie cam. The Twinkie cam, the bow into the mouth of the terror toad, and she comes back, and Tommy's all happy. And then Tommy starts getting and, schizophrenic, is and he's looking. And then all, all of a sudden, he gets flashbacks of the editing from that one episode where he can't keep his shirt on, and he starts fighting it. But hold on, hold on. Starts, his greatest yeah. fear is putties for some reason, even though he's been beating them all all this season. He's been beating the shit out of putties since he started working with the Power Rangers, and now he's suddenly afraid of them. <laughs> yeah, it's like what the hell? Really, really? Oh. Uh... And what's even better is that the putties that he is seeing are actually the, the rangers. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, it's like, damn it, really? He, I just got to say that. Really? <laughs> putties? Yeah. It, it honestly seems like the first two fears are really good. They ran out of, the, uh, ran out of ideas for the rest, except for Jason at the end. Well, for we'll Tommy, to they could have just said his biggest fear was turning to evil again. But I don't know. They could have done that. Stupid! You're so stupid! Yeah, I wish yeah, you know that. what? That would have been great. And Jason is just evil, Tommy. So we come back God, to the comments. We're so much better at writing than Chris Shun. Shun. <laughs> so we come back to command center and Shun, please. Uh, yes. <laughs> Shun. Shun, please. <laughs> And then oh. Rumple Foreskin shows up again. No, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Sorry, um, and then we come back to the command center and... Oh, oh, God! Oh, my God! What the fuck, Malcolm? Rumple Foreskin. <laughs> oh, my God. So we come back to command center and Alpha's wondering if he's fixed this thing. He presses the button and he gets shocked and he goes all haywire. It's like, ay, 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 ay. And starts bouncing off the fucking computer. And uh, we come back to uh, this palace and uh, Rita's happy saying like, oh, it's all going great. So um, come back to the island. Is it? It it is, I think. (laughs) Two out of the six have already broken her spell. But she looks happy. I guess. Yeah. It seems like now she's like, I, I believe what's going on is like she's saying it's Trini's turn now or something. Uh, Tommy is fading away, and uh, Quagmire shows up on a tree, does a bunch of rhyming, tells him like, hey, do something. I <laughs> said, <laughs> do something. <laughs> so Tommy thinks do back something. to... Do something. So since Tommy... Do something. So since Tommy's fear is his putties, 
What does he think of to get back his confidence? Beating up some putties. And beating up putties. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Specifically from the Masquerade episode. Yeah, it's like, dude. This is why you don't listen to Rumple Forskin's advice. <laughs> uh, damn it. So he, he uh, has confidence by beating up putties to get his fear of beating up putties. Doesn't make sense. Whatever. Yeah. Let's get on with it. Moving on. We move on to Trini, and Trini is like, Saying that he she's really afraid of Reed is gonna that Reed is gonna go for her next, and then she realizes that her act she's actually looking up at her fear, which is Billy being too high on a mountain. And this is the theory where I came up with I seriously think because like Trini and Billy always had some good chemistry together, and once and always I seriously think that Ming is the daughter of Billy. Like she's thinking about she her fear is like losing Billy, which is kind of cute. No. Oh, very cute. It, it it really seems like something they never wanted to pull the trigger on, which is really disappointing. Like may, maybe they just didn't want like all the members of the team to like get together or something, because we all know Zach and Z Zach and Jason were inevitable. I, I do remember them saying they were like best friends specifically, like like Zach and Jason are specifically best friends to each other. So Quagmire shows up again, speaks in rhymes. Of, I'm not. I don't know what he's saying. Tells her to talks so about her fear of heights, and then her positive thought is her literally murdering a putty by throwing her him off the cliff and saving Billy. Yeah, but yeah, murder. So thanks for the help again, Green Gordon. Ah, uh, yeah, Fucking Gordon. Gordon. So she comes back from being being screened to death, and then it's Billy's turn because he goes like, "I don't think I can calculate any of this because I don't think I can figure anything out." Because he's such a genius, uh, he goes like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't think my knowledge will help." And then he immediately starts fading away. Yeah, because he doesn't think he's smart enough to figure all this out. And mm -hmm. uh, Quagmire comes back behind Jason, like behind his bush, like, "What's with you in bushes?" Here's what pisses me off about this bit: instead of Quagmire just staying there. They keep calling him for him back, and this is like when I'm done talking to someone, cough, cough, doif, cough, cough, <laughs> and then he immediately calls me back two minutes later. <laughs> Look, I'm I'm sorry if I resemble the Wish.com version of Robin Hood. That's not my fault. What, bro? What are you talking about, man? Wish.com or Robin Hood? Yeah, he he is Wish.com Robin Hood. Quagmire is. <laughs> So Quagmire tells Billy, like, "Not gonna be able to top Rumple Foreskin, am I?" You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. No, no you're not. No. So Quagmire tells Billy to like, stop being a bitch. <laughs> Don't be a bitch. <laughs> and uh, Billy <laughs> thinks back to Madame Wo and how he uh, defeated her and all he because defeated like, her yeah, by himself. By himself for the first time. Oh yeah, and and that was like actually that 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 um epi or uh, that that episode or two parter. I can't remember if it was a two parter. It was a one parter. One parter. <laughs> so an episode. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> One part. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say one parter before, but uh, well, th that was like, part, yeah, that was the uh, uh um, the uh, Uncle Howard episode, right? No, that was the uh, no, that was the Fembilly episode Fem Billy. with the PowerPoint uh, combination, yeah, the, the one time. Oh, okay, that so right, Billy that comes was... back and they go celebrate with him, and Jason is all happy, goes like, good. Uh, how does he would say it? He walks off and says what? Oh, uh, he's like he walks away. He's like, oh good, my friends, they they are back again. <laughs> uh, oh no, I'm gonna see Goldar in the sky, and he tells me this, my friends are dead, and turn around, and oh god, they disappear. Your Jason voice is turning into Tommy was so. It, I thought it was more <laughs> Austrian. Dude, oh, it was always a weird like love child of Tommy Wiseau and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, right, right. So yeah, like Goldar. I, 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 I thought you were doing like, I honestly thought you were doing like a Paz Brooklyn kind of accent. Yo, Joey numbers here. <laughs> Yo, it's me, Joey from Yu-Gi-Oh. Get him, yu <laughs> Pigeons loose. Let the pigeons loose. Let the pigeons loose. Goldar says, like, hey, you're eating nothing as a leader. And Jason goes, like, yeah, I'm not I, not a true leader, blah, blah, blah. And he Tommy says, we'll see about that. Him, um, I got to say, like, as I said earlier, um, specifically with um, 
I believe it was Billy and uh, Trini faded away. I thought their reasoning was eh, not that good, but for Jason being last and having his fear be letting like letting everyone down and everyone fading away, I gotta say like because Jason I think is the least developed character in the original season of series of Power Rangers. Um, I think this is a good leader, like fill in for him. Like he true, it shows he truly does care about his team. Yeah. That was, the, that's why we said that makes him a great leader. Cause he was always the best. He was always serious. He always looked it's, it, it's just perfect character development. Chef kiss. Absolutely. Ab- absolutely. It was. Yeah. Then Quagmire shows up and tells him like, Jason, stop being a bitch or Tommy's going to replace you. Bye. Disappears. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> See, you la- See you later. Jason starts uh, green screening out of there, and he starts remembering back to the King Spinks episode where first fight, I believe it was. Ah, uh, yes, before my time. Yes, before your time. It was the first. Yes, fight. where they cut to the pilot. Yeah. No, that was the first episode. Oh no, it was episode. It was three. three. Episodes. Oh yeah, because his it team was wasn't there. He- he wasn't there, so he was alone. So yeah, mm-hmm. lost King Spinks on his own. So he beats that in with that with confidence and comes back, and they all celebrate. And Tom goes like, "God damn it! Why don't you just go away so I can take over?" But I, I'll, I can wait a couple of years. <laughs> Sorry, I was just um, uh, uh, thinking of something funny Smithers did today. And then we get something I, I have to mention. The very first time, and one of the only times we get to see. Rita grow. Everything myself. Oh yeah, she grows I, herself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She does and starts shaking the the island of illusion around. You no, know, she needs it, and then it like it's clearly on like a wire because it goes to swing up, and just before it starts swinging down, they cut to uh the footage of the Sentai Rangers being sent to the island of illusion, but they reverse the footage. Of course, because they morphed out of there and they reverse the footage. Yeah, they get out of there, and then for some reason it cuts back to Rita firing off a laser beam and destroying the island of evolution that too well i I think it's because uh she was trying to destroy the island while they were still on it but then they managed to morph last second yeah of course it's like when uh it's like it's like when tails and sonic all like all the heroes from sonic adventure 2 escaped prison island right before before it exploded what I'm specifically imagining, though, with uh, that scene with the rangers on the island, as she throws it and is about to blow it up, as they say it's morphing time, I imagine them going like, it's morphing time! Like, just trying to press the button on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they teleport into the Megazord, and they get, reverse the footage with the Megazords because they get out of the cocky and get back up. Yeah, they literally... The, the, the Zord has been washed! The bus has been washed! For the first time, we see Tommy inside the Megazord. But yeah, we cut back yeah. to the Megazord, which is clearly the Mega Dragon Zord, but they haven't done that yet. So we see Tommy in the Megazord, the regular Megazord. And then we get the Mega Dragon Zord transformation for we the first it. time. Amazing! And, and we get to see him use the power of Z over Z. Here's my issue with the Mega Dragon Zord. It's just the Megazord wearing the Dragon Zord as a hat. Yeah, it really is. Kind of cool. Where does I the rest always, of his body go? I always thought this form as a kid was stupid as well. So, like, honestly, not a hot take in my opinion. Always thought Dragon Zord in fighting mode was way cooler. Yeah. I'm just wondering where the rest of its body went because it's just the upper half body. The legs are just I sitting there. They yeah. are? I, oh, I wow. literally think that is just like all of the dragon sword. Like you, you can just like split the dragon sword in half, except for like the tail, and um, and I, then the, you know, that's literally all that's left is the legs and the tail, and they just run away. <laughs> oh yes. oh yeah. Uh, the no no, it's the tail and the center chest piece. Uh, that um, uh, that that's that like that, like it, like it. It slides out like a disk drive. So Jason calls the Ultra Zord, and we get... I mean, Jason calls the old friend of Zord on Titanus, and we get the Ultra Zord in all its glory. For looks real some, this time. Yeah, it looks amazing. Yeah, for real. So, and they shoot the Stormtrooper bullets, and Rita's go like, ah, oh, damn it, and leaves. So <laughs> Yeah, they, well, no, they destroy me, Titus. Yeah, destroy Mutitis. I keep forgetting the name. And they they use the Mega Dragon Zord to destroy Mutitis, and 
then they use the Ultra Sword to, to, to destroy Lokar. Or, like, mm. send him flying away. Send him flying away because he just runs away, yeah. The flying so if you Yeah, hey guys, we killed Satan. Yeah, I was about to say, if you think about it, the Power Rangers, six teenagers with attitude just killed Satan. Well, Lokar does return later on in a different episode. So we cut back to the youth center, and Bulk is doing a dance, sort of? There, it's the dance contest, and yeah. uh, Bulk is trying to dance, and then he ends up flopping on his back. Uh, Skull starts pulling him up, and then the judges give him the following scores. The left judge, zero. The right, the middle judge, one, and the Russian judge on the right, negative three. Yeah, it's like that's not good. And Ernie goes like, "Well, damn, Bulk, uh, just go over there." So Ernie goes like, "Uh, that that's not good. Uh, the Zach, get in here, save this." So and it's now Zach. it's Zach. So Zach is still not calm. He goes like, "Man, I can't do this." Shut up, Zach. You already had. We, we are. We did this already. Come on, man. He's like, we went to an island. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> So it's like, oh yeah, sure. And then he starts dancing away and weird ass music in the background. You killed Satan. What's there to be afraid of? There's no more hell. Yeah. And uh, yeah. oh god. So what? when there's no more room in hell, the so, dead will walk. Through. Get the fuck out of here. Damn it, why'd you <laughs> it's a good movie though. It's a good movie. That's Great. it. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers has officially started Dawn of the Dead. All uh, right, let's go to the mall. Boo, you suck! So yeah, da- Zach is dancing. And uh, they're saying, like, who's the DJ? He's got some smooth food. Like, I'm wondering. No, he the doesn't. DJ. That's some really bad music. But they say, who's the DJ? And we see Orange Waddle. I mean, Quagmire. It's Quagmire. <laughs> Who else but Quagmire? It's Quagmire. Quagmire. Giggity, 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 giggity. Let's have sex. So Zach wins. And we never see Quagmire again because Bell just murdered Quagmire. No, 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 Quagmire went to get the milk again. Oh, right, exactly. And Ernie gave <laughs> well, no, and unfortunately, had... uh, I think Skull caught wind that he was associated with the Rangers. <laughs> oh, God. So Zach and, and after, 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 after Zach finishes, the, the judges give him perfect tens. Ernie announces him the winner, and he gets the trophy. And then he's like, all right, guys, let's dance. And then the fucking ending credits pop up. That let's boogie. Yeah, and then the ending credits pop up before they can boogie. Yeah, like 90s free frame. Yay! So, thoughts on these three episodes? Uh, go, Doi. Oh my god, honestly, the, this was a lot of fun. The, the, this two-parter was really entertaining. Like, just, um, honestly, like, as, as much as I called it a crummy-ass clip show, the clips were relatively short. Um, relevant. <laughs> yeah, relevant to some degree. Um, and they were to episodes that, like, I think all of us had, like, positive connections with and, like, enjoyed watching. So it's like mm-hmm. it wasn't like we were being forced to watch like um like a to use another Simpsons reference, that one uh clip where it turned out Seymour Skinner wasn't Seymour Skinner. Wheel of Misfortune was really great. Uh this two parter was really great. Um I again hot take, I think when they're just having fun and doing non um storyline based stuff where it's more sort of like there's not really a a technically um a like quote unquote like story as in like later seasons of power rangers but like generally whenever tommy's the focused i'd say that's where it's more sto- like actual like canon story stuff instead of just like filler but I think that's where the fun lies in in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I think when they're just having fun, doing their own thing, d- doing their own thing, that's where the peak of the show comes in for me, or right. the best of the show. That's mm-hmm. fair, uh, Adam. <laughs> yeah, uh, these these were very fun episodes. Wheel of Misfortune had a lot to talk about, and <laughs> even though the Mount Monster of the Week was a fucking wheel, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it it had a lot of fun things to talk about, like the editing and the fucking Tommy fight, and like all the mis all the issues and like different inconsistencies with like Zordon's voice. It was a lot to talk about, and honestly, it, half of the fun 
is uh like i wouldn't even say half the fun 75 to 80 percent of the fun with these episodes is recounting all the fun bullshit that happens on in the episode on this podcast Mm -hmm. so uh when that's probably why i like doing filler as opposed to really serious story work because with green with evil and other like story-based things it feels like people have talked about them to death very and true. there isn't a lot of room for experimenting. But with the filler, it feels like you can talk about a lot of the weird inconsistencies and bullshit. So I think that's why I personally love doing filler as opposed to story stuff. Uh, also, Island of Illusion had a lot of fun things to talk about as well. The clip show wasn't like completely catastrophic. Uh, I found it honestly kind of entertaining. And... Uh, the uh all the stuff in part one was also very good i'm sad we won't be seeing quagmire again though so uh real misfortune like it's a great filler episode it's the wheel that just bugs the hell out of me it's like come on man you're fighting the goddamn wheel what the hell is this it's a wheel it's a wheel what a good filler episode we had fun watching it and i love the move sorry go ahead Oh, actually, sidebar. So, so I'm I'm so sorry to interrupt, Andreas, but I just thought of something with um, uh, with w- specifically with Zhu Ranger having a lot of uh mystical and like lore based um uh, like or uh, m- m- mythology based creatures in it, uh, including like modern m- m- mythological creatures and magic uh and stuff like that. Um, maybe. The wheel is based on something. Uh, probably. I'm the wheel of fortune okay. tarot card. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe, or maybe it's like the turkey and makes no sense. So Island of Sorry. Illusion episode, I liked it too because like we get to see for the first time like the Rangers conquering their fears. Not until like the second episode, but it it it, it gears up towards that. Like all six of them like trying to figure it out, but especially. I'm talking too much, sorry. Island of Illusion Part 1. Part 2 is the whole clip show episode, which I can't stand in the Power Rangers universe because in further seasons, they just drag it out so much and it's so annoying. But this one did a pretty good job. It's a decent job, not the best one because uh, RPM had the best one and so did Dino Charge. But uh, come on, man. And SPD. And SPD. But come on, man. Tommy being afraid of putties and then conquering his fear of putties by beating up putties. Dude, it would shoot. make more sense to have him afraid of his clothes constantly being taken off and put back on. Yeah, yeah. very true. Or but, being afraid of his evil self. Like, he should have just fought <laughs> Dr. Draken. It actually would have been cooler if, like, all of, like, maybe everyone else did, did, did disappeared. Or maybe it's, like, six Tommies showed up. <laughs> and they all Spider-Man pointed each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like i said also i like the the whole trainee bit being like billy she fears for billy's safety and like i said they had good chemistry since day one and a lot of people have been saying like yeah uh, ming is probably billy's daughter but they never mentioned it because like who knows who ming's daughter do- ming's father is in once and always like years later but mm-hmm. also a great 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 episode and that's my take anyway we're Done with this podcast right now. Uh, lead us out, Malcolm, like always. Everyone say bye. 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 Yeah, everyone say bye. Uh, I, I have been uh, dead shrew, and that is my opinion. I am humanoid, and I'm just... Cut that bitch off! And I am the doif. I speak for the trees, and may the power protect you. <laughs>